Hello everybody, Manix here. Got another tabletop knife review for you right here, right now. Feel free to subscribe, hit that little bell notification if you don't want to miss any future knife reviews, flashlight videos, EDC videos, so on and so forth. I am uploading weekly now. Anyway, let's get right into the review. This is the K-Bar Warthog folder. Let's just call this the K-Bar Warthog, because that's what I know it as. It is a folding knife, as you can see, liner lock. It's kind of a blast from the past. It's a classic folding knife. I know this model has been around for over a decade now, 15 years or so, maybe even longer. I don't know the exact history, but it's a folding knife that goes way, way back. And as far as classic folders go, it's very interesting to see it in comparison to more modern folding knives. Now, before I get into the review, what is the whole pitch of this knife? What's the point? What's it all about? Is it cheap? Is it expensive? It's a very, very, very cheap knife. You can get these all day long for about 20 bucks. Cheapest I've seen these was, I think, 17 so it's about a $20 folder, sub 20 buck knife. It's got a great lockup. Blade steel is uh, good enough with its heat treatment, I'll get into that. Overall fit and finish is actually not bad. If you take a really good close look there, we got G10 handle scales here, stainless steel, also stainless steel liners. It's kind of a dark bead blasted finish, I believe that is, but I'll get into the specs. I'm gonna double check, tip down, right hand carry only for the pocket clip, works pretty well. Decently comfortable. It's not the most comfortable, but I'll get into it. It's good enough for what it is. I like the shape of it. It's kind of weird and interesting, kind of funky looking, kind of ugly, but in a good way. Talk about ugly. It doesn't look like it's not a beautiful knife by any means, but it just looks like a rugged user folding knife. But for the money, it's actually totally adequate. It's probably the best $20 folder out there, unless you talk about the Gonzos. But as far as non Gonzo and non knife stealing design knives, this is pretty much the best one you can get out there for the $20 range. But if you just spend a good six, seven, eight bucks more, you can get something better with a much better blade seal for the money anyway. Even ATR 13 MOV will be better than what you have on here. It's kind of in a weird spot, you know, if you absolutely want to save your money as much as possible, but you want a good functional folding knife, this is probably a good one to go to. Again, minus the Gonzos. Gonzos have some amazing folders for this exact price range right here, I hate to say, but not getting into the politics of that, um, Let's just get right down to this review real quick. It's just something interesting. I bought this knife because I, I heard the name K-Bar Warthog a long time ago when I was first getting into knives. I heard it once in a while. I know it's nothing special, but it's just kind of a part of folding knife history. And it is a functional blade, and it's good for the money. So it, it's a good beating folding knife. 3.125 inch blade length. Overall length is 7.5 inches. The handle length is 4.375 inches. Drop point blade on there. Kind of funky design, but I do like it overall. It's very skinny where the tang is. 3CR13 blade steel. Ever heard of that one? I'll get into that in just a moment here. It says it's got a hollow grind on there. Weighs 3.9 ounces. And as I said, G10 handle scales, stainless steel bolster. So 7.5 inch knife just around under four ounces. Uh, specs online about weights are usually never right for some reason, so let me double check this real quick. We have 4.75 ounces. I don't know if we're talking about the same knife, so it's actually closer to five than it is four ounces, like the website was saying. So, kind of heavy for its size. There are no skeletonization holes in the liners right there, as you can see, which kind of aids to its weight. I like all the little jimps, all the cutouts on the corners we have right here. They're lined up well with the liners as well as the G10 handle scales. And then I like, we have sort of like some jimping on this blade right here, but it's kind of useless because first of all, a lot of it is subdued underneath the handle, so you can't even physically touch that. You can kind of touch up here, but it's kind of rounded and not very useful. It's kind of awkward to hold. It's not super uncomfortable, but it's certainly not a comfortable ergonomic handle either. My hand doesn't really know where to go. Uh, naturally, I grab it in this position, right where that choil is. We have somewhat of a guard here where the bolster is. My thumb lays right on top of it, nice and slippery right there. Not touching the blade whatsoever. That might be kind of the style of the knife. It kind of reminds me of the Cold Steel Recon 1. The blade's kind of jutting out of the way, and you're not making any contact with it with your skin at all. But I kind of naturally want to scooch up here, but now I'm touching the corner of the bolster, and I'm really close to the cutting edge, which I'm not a huge fan of. There's no cutout accommodating the blade or anything like that. It's just kind of slapped on there, it looks like. Uh, again, not too bad. I kind of like how the handle shape almost mimics a blade in reverse, sort of. Interesting. I know that's just what could fit in that way, but very simple, clean, kind of looking knife. It's, it's kind of cool. I like the dark gray. 
It doesn't say what the finish is, but I'm pretty sure it's just a bead blast. But it's darker than the typical bead blasting that you'll see. All the hardware kind of seems to mimic it. So the liners, the hardware, the pocket clip, the blade all have the same finish. And then it's next to that nice black G10. I like the lines right here. The grippiness is about on par with like a Spyderco Tenacious, somewhere around there. You know, it's not super grippy, not super soft either. It is what it is, not a big deal. Liner lock. Feels kind of thin. It feels kind of cheap to me, but the lockup is actually really good. There is no up and down. There is some side to side, but that can be adjusted out. You see the stop pin right there. It's very simple, works very well. Good lockup. Comfortable enough. You know, you got some reach right there too. It's not the longest blade in the world, but you do have an extra inch or so of reach because of the way the handle is designed, which keeps the knife legal in some cases. I like the thumb studs on here. They are cylindrical, tapered just a little bit on the top. That's perfect execution for a thumb stud. The knife's kind of awkward. It's weird how the thumb stud's kind of all the way down here. Most knives would be somewhere around here. So it feels kind of kind of weird. I feel like I'm in an odd position when I'm trying to open it up. But it's not the end of the world. It's just it's something you will have to get used to. As soon as you get this knife, if you had even like three or four other modern folders, or folders made in the last ten years or so, you'll immediately notice, you're like, what the? Oh, it's down here. It feels like a weird hunchback knife or something. It's in kind of an odd spot. But it does deploy fast as long as you get used to it. It's very smooth. For what it is it feels a lot more high quality than it is for the price it's absolutely adequate absolutely fantastic so good lockup okay ergonomics very good deployment as long as you get used to it carries okay i don't mind this pocket clip i don't hate it it is what it is kind of skeletonizer there is interesting they did something new i don't like how it looks like a spoon but whatever good tension on it not too tight, not too loose, it's actually okay. I don't like it when pocket clips are gradual like this. I like it when they have more abrupt striations or more abrupt movements, so you'd see it shoot up, plateau, then pinch back down, rather than this loopy crap we have right here. I don't like that, it just seems to be a little bit too tight. I want all the tension to be right here, not up here. So if you have a thicker fabric, this whole thing's gonna be pinching down on it. Maybe that's what you want, that could be a good case. I know there's more expensive knives that use similar patterns like this. I know they're doing it on purpose. Why? I think it's less likely to get snagged on anything. It's less likely to get caught on a seat belt or something. So maybe that is the advantage. But I personally don't like it as much as the pocket clips that are not shaped this way. But again, not a huge deal. Don't really care that much. It is what it is. It carries okay. Decent amount poking out of your pocket right there. You will have to get used to the tip down orientation. But again, this knife goes way back. This design anyway at least 15 years ago or so. I, I didn't do my research or anything, but from what I recall, it, it goes back a long time. They haven't changed it much since then. Now, 3CR13. It's a very special blade steel. No, it's not 3CR13 MOV or 8CR13 MOV, as you may be used to. 3CR13 is the exact same blade steel that Spyderco uses on their bug line. Yes, the Spyderco Honeybee, the bug, I believe the Grasshopper also uses it. It's a very low-end steel. It's extremely soft. Cuts through paper like it's air, but you bang it on something just a little bit, you cut just a little bit with it, it's going to get dull on you very fast. We'll sharpen up very fast, but it will not hold it for crap. It is what it is. Uh, I've been saying that a lot in this video. It is what it is. Because it is what it is. It's the Caber Warthog. It is a good blade, so it's gonna be it's gonna beat what you have in all the M techs that probably have 440A on them, maybe 440C if you're lucky. M techs getting slightly better with their quality, but compared to most of the M techs anyway, this is gonna beat those a little bit. The blade steel, I do know for a fact, has a better heat treatment than those, but 3 star 13, I would say, is pretty much just worse than 440C. However, from K-Bar, they do an okay job with their heat treatment. It's at least adequate. It's not a piss-poor job that you would see on the really cheap stuff, like the m for example. So it's a step above, like, the really cheap, cheap knives. That's what this K-Bar Warthog is. It's just a little bit better than those. Fit and finish is much better. Lockup's better. Blade steel and heat treatment. Overall construction is better, but it's still a very cheap knife. It's a sub-$20 bill. This is as far as what it's going to cost for you. That's kind of the appeal of this knife. So you just want a good functional folder, but you don't want to spend a whole lot of money, and you don't want a gonzo for pol political reasons. Get the K-Bar Warthog. You know, it is good enough. It's kind of funky. It's kind of weird, but it is functional. I do use it for work all the time. As you can see, I have been using it right there. I mean, not all the time. I mostly just use it for testing because I wanted to do this video and give you an adequate review of it. But if I don't want to grab something a little fancy, I just feel like I'm just using the, my little beater knife, the K-Bar Warthog. It's actually a really good beater folder. It's going to be pretty good for defense, too. You know, you can get it real sharp. Don't use it ever until that dark, rainy day comes. If it does, 
good deployment. You got some good reach there. It doesn't look like a terribly scary knife. It doesn't look huge or anything, but you do have a decent amount of reach right there with, again, a legal short blade. Really stout belly. I actually like the blade shape a lot. The belly is really, really abrupt right there. I kind of like that. Most of them are more gradual. They kind of dip down here. This one's like, whoop. So I, I like it. It's called cool. stout, fat, kind of chunky looking blade. Yeah, I don't really know what else there is to say about it. It's a good knife for sub $20. Let me just end the review comparing it to a few other folders that you may be familiar with. CRKT Piet, this little tiny guy, a little bit shorter. You can see there, close. And like that. Actually, let's flip them this way so with the pocket clips. You can see the pocket clips, and they won't be making the knife move around too much. And then here's a knife you are probably familiar with if you've been watching knives on YouTube for a while Spider Co. Manix G10. One of my favorite knives ever. Can't wait to do the review on that guy. Beautiful, sexy blade. And then Cold Steel Voyager Lard, another one of my all-time favorites. Slightly longer than all these guys, but there you go for a little size comparison. Isn't that beautiful? What a beautiful image right there. It's like the whole bunch of cousins of knives from different companies, different sizes, different shapes, different blade styles, different pocket clips, different materials overall and textures. Very interesting to see that. I would classify this as a medium-sized folder. It's not medium-small, it's not small, it's not medium-large. It's not large like this guy, medium large like the Manix, it's not small. I would just call it straight up medium, medium size folder. It's going to be pretty long for most people's uses, and even yours probably. Even if you use a knife for work, this still might be slightly too much edge for you. To be honest, most of the time we're not using that much of our edge, especially something like a 4-inch blade. We usually don't need all that cutting edge, but I still like to carry it anyway. I like having the potential, I like having the capability in my blade. Just like I don't need a triad lock, I don't need the knife to be super strong, but I like having the option there, so... Anyway, that is the K-Bar Warthog Folding Knife. Again, I'll have the exact specific name in the title. Interesting little blast from the past that they still make today. It's still a decent knife for the money. It's not fantastic, but you really can't complain for what you're spending on it. I just like having it as part of the collection, even though it's not the most exciting knife ever, just because there's a, there's a little story behind it. It's something kind of interesting. It's a beater. It's a user Works just fine. No, it won't outperform the knives that are more expensive than it, even $10 more than it. But it still works. It's still a very functional, good enough folder. And for the money, I really can't complain about it at all. So it's worth checking out. If you have a little knife collection going, you kind of just want to throw something interesting in there. A lot of people who are knife people anyway will probably recognize it. Oh, it's a Kbar Warthog. You know, it's kind of like the mag light of the flashlights. It's way worse than everything we have on the market right now. But we still love it anyway because it was one of the first ones kind of the granddaddy of the other folders, even though it can't exactly keep up with the others. But again, for the money, not bad. Anyway, that's the end of the review. Feel free to subscribe. Check out my other videos. I have a whole playlist of other folding knives you can quickly and cleanly get to. And that is it. Manix out.